Welcome to video three for week six. In the previous videos, I've talked about linear transformations. I've talked about the matrix representation of them. Let's get into some more concrete examples and talk about what are the transformations of R2. So these are all gonna be coded by two by two matrices. So things that send R2 to R2. And it turns out there are exactly five types and all transformations are either one of these five types or compositions of these five types. We have rotations, reflections, skews, dilations, and projections. And I'm gonna talk through these all in turn and tell you about their matrix representation. So let's start with rotations. So rotations, what I'm talking about are rotations around the origin counterclockwise by some angle theta. Our convention for rotation in mathematics is counterclockwise. It's a convention for angles that you may have already done in previous courses. And each rotation around the origin is a linear transformation. If I spin something around the origin, well then lines remain lines, flat things remain flat things, and it turns out it preserves the operations of addition and scalar multiplication as well. So the rotation by an angle theta, the general form is given by this, the matrix with entries cos theta minus sine theta, sine theta and cos theta. And I've given you some special examples here. So this is a rotation by pi over two, that's a quarter turn. This is a rotation by pi, which is a half turn. This is rotation by 3 pi over 2, which is 3 quarters of a turn. Feel free to try these out on some vectors, and you will see that if you put any vector here and do the matrix action, the resulting vector will be the same length and just a quarter turn uh, around counterclockwise. Describing reflections is a little bit trickier. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take some vector AB which is a unit vector, remind you that means that it's of length one. And that defines a direction. So that defines a line in that direction. And that's a line I can reflect over. So these reflections are reflections over lines, and these lines have to be through the origin. That, because the origin has to be fixed by linear transformations, reflections have to be lines to the origin. So by giving a unit vector, I can define a line, and that line defines a reflection over that line. That reflection has this form. So the entries of that line give you that form. The fact that this is a unit vector is important. If this were not a unit vector length one, this would be a slightly more complicated matrix. And I can give you some examples. If this were negative one here, this is a reflection over the x axis. This is a reflection over the y axis. This is a reflection over the line y equals x, and this is a reflection over the line y equals negative x. And that's this diagonal line, and that's this diagonal line. So reflections over those two lines. And again, take this matrix, apply it to some vector, and you can check that it will be in fact reflected over this line, no matter what vector you put there. Skews are perhaps a little bit uh, less easily explained. What a skew is doing is best explained by acting on a square. Um, and particularly the vector 1, 1 at the end of the square. So if I take this first matrix, 1, 0, 1, 1, and act on 1, 1, this matrix action is going to give me 1, 2. So this is going to send it up there. And what it's going to do to the rest of the square is turn it into this parallelogram. So it's called a skew because it sort of pulls things up in some direction. This one's pulling it up in the y direction. And if there's a square down here, it'll be pulled in the opposite direction. It will be skewed down to this parallelogram. So it sort of pulls up in one direction and down in the direction. Doesn't affect the left right distance, but sort of skews things over. This, so this is a skew up in the y direction. This is a skew over in the x direction. So this will take a square and send it to this parallelogram. So this is skewing sort of horizontally, pushing things over, and the opposite square down here will be skewed over into this parallelogram. So pull positive for positive x and negative for negative x. And that's not a general form. There's a bunch of different skews, but they all sort of look generally like this. You can skew a little bit, you can skew a lot, you can skew in the x direction, you can skew in the y direction but they are one of the five classes of things that we can do that turn out to be linear transformations. Um, dilations, we talked about a little bit already in the previous video. These are stretches in the x and y axis, so they have a matrix that is A0, 0, B. 
So that's going to be stretching the x-axis by a factor of a, stretching the y-axis by a factor of b. And lastly, we have things called projections. So what a projection does is it takes a line and it sends everything to the closest point on that line. So you think of projection as flattening down space to a line. It's going to lose dimension. Um, a projection will always lose dimension, will always go from a two-dimensional space to a one-dimensional space or lower. But we can describe it the same way we described rotate or reflections. So if I have a unit vector here, AB, that unit vector defines a line in some direction. So if AB is a unit vector, the projection onto that line is given by the matrix with these coordinates. And any line to the origin I can project onto has to be a line to the origin, of course. But I can squish space down to any of these particular lines. I can squish it down to the x-axis, squish it down to the y-axis, squish it down to some diagonal line. And then lastly, the zero vector sends everything to the origin. That's also considered a projection, a projection to the origin. It just collapses the entire two-dimensional space down to a zero-dimensional point. Those are the five classes of transformations in R2 and their associated matrices. And it's a remarkable theorem, which we're not going to prove in this course, that everything you can do in R2 can be broken down into these five things plus combinations of them. So you can project, then rotate, or skew, and then reflect. But everything in R2 that's a linear transformation is some combination of these five fundamental types.